Spirit, take over now. We give you praise. We thank you for where you brought us from and where you're taking us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, we are still continuing our seven days. And today is the day seven of Enough is Enough. And in this series, the Holy Ghost began to open us up to the reason why many things may be wrong. The reason why you have delayed, your life is frustrated, you are broke, poor, impoverished, things are not working. Because it is impossible for things not to work if you are in the center of the will of God. Thou shalt serve the Lord, he shall bless. If they obey and serve, they shall spend their days in prosperity, years in pleasure. And so God is using this time to open us up to the mystery of stars, destiny, glory. And we've learned a lot. We've been able to discover what star of every man is relative to the glory of the man, relative to the purpose of the man, the whole essence of your existence, relative to your destiny. We have also understood how a star is said to be stolen, but you have been able to see that no star can be stolen. At best, a star can be transferred, and no star can be transferred, no destiny can be stolen, no glory can be stolen without transaction. The terminology stolen is a deception from the devil. Because nothing happens in the realm of the spirit without legitimacy, whether it is good or bad. And so we began to understand and we've been able to see the various ways by which destinies has been transacted. And we've been looking for three episodes now, Satan get lost, my destiny is not for sale. And briefly yesterday, we began to understand and to uncover how to begin to recover your transacted destiny, transacted star, and or transacted glory. Thank you, Jesus. And today we're going to take it a bit further. I know that we it's not something we can ultimately finish today, but the Holy Ghost always has his own way. That's why in day one, we started with prophetic warfare to recover all your destiny, glory, and star. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. So tonight, we want to continue on journey into destiny recovery or star recovery or glory recovery through skillful warfare. And so you will need to follow me patiently. We have enough time today. It's Friday. And so we will be able to spend qualitative time in downloading these realities. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not natural. But this weapon, once you understand this weapon to this to recover your star, to recover your glory, to, to recover your destiny, you realize that these weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So the strongholds that has held your star, glory, and destiny in captivity are going to be pulled down and casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And we're not going to end up there. We are going to now to arrest everyone that has put your destiny in captivity and has been living your life. Hallelujah to Jesus. No, don't forget, we also discovered that God also exchanged destiny. And that is more dangerous because once God exchanges your destiny, you become irrelevant. They are irrecoverable. Come on, talk to me, child of God. Did you hear what I just said? What did you hear? Who wants to try? When God exchanges your destiny, it's over. Why? Because for the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. <laughs> the moment your destiny is exchanged by the devil, they are recoverable. All the witches and wizards, all the sorcerers, all the mansions, whoever they are, that transfer your stars, that transfers your glory, transfers your destiny, they are recoverable from them. But when God is the one that exchanges your destiny, transfers your star, takes your crown from you, it's over for you, brother. It's a dangerous game to play with God. 
May you not push God to the point of transferring your star. For the gift and the calling of God are irrecoverable once when they are given. And because you are unique and your destiny is unique, when you are failing that critical destiny and God takes that destiny from you, you become irrelevant in the prophetic agenda of God for your generation. Brothers and sisters, they are irrecoverable. So if God is still waiting upon you like a prodigal son, blessed are thou. <laughs> Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. For the gifts that you need to use to fulfill your destiny and the calling which defines your star, your glory, your purpose, your destiny, are without repentance. They are irrecoverable. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. I just needed to reemphasize that to you so that for those who miss episode 1 to 6, you know you've missed a lot. You need to go back to them. For everyone that useth me is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. We establish that ignorance fundamentally and sin are basic requirement of trading your destiny in destiny market. And you have also learned that every destiny in the destiny trading floor are traded on the platform of wisdom. And for your destiny to be recovered, you also need the supreme wisdom of God. No destiny is so straightforward and no destiny is recovered, so to say, straightforward. And tonight, we want to begin to see how it can be recovered. But you need to be skillful in the word of righteousness. And you need to know the truth. The sword of the spirit is required. But this particular sword of the spirit for destiny recovery are the things we want to break down tonight. And God willing, on Sunday evening and Sunday morning, by the grace of God, as the Holy Ghost we guide, we should be closing up victoriously, more victoriously, and I would have handed over to you solution to help destinies to be recovered. So that you go forward recovering your destiny, recovering your star, recovering your glory and that of your family, lineage, your brothers, your sisters. You can help everybody begin to recover their respective destinies when you know the truth. And so pay serious attention to this truth tonight because you need this truth to fight. I've told you. Everyone that has transferred your destiny, that the devil has transferred your star and your glory to, they ain't going to let you have them back on a platter of joke. They will fight because you're going to restore them to their own factory default. And they ain't going to let it be except with a mighty hand. And here is where First Timothy 6.12 also becomes relevant when you have to fight the good fight of destiny. To be able to lay hold back on eternal life which defines your destiny. So let's get deeper now. Understanding the reverse transaction to recover your destiny. Your transferred star and your transferred glory. Please hear what I say. It took transaction for your destiny to be put on sale, for your star to be transferred, for your glory to be taken. It was by transaction. And it will take another more expensive transaction together with strategic, skillful warfare, with the excellent wisdom of God for you to recover your stolen or your, your, your transferred destiny, glory and star. Don't forget they are never stolen. You sold them. Listen to this beautiful scripture that Jesus Christ revealed to us. What happens on the trading floor of destiny? Matthew chapter 16 verse 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So Jesus has given us a code here, a revelation here that when destinies are put for sale, there's an exchange, there's a transaction. <laughs> and every trading floor of destiny focuses on materialistic things. Every destiny that has been put up for sale, they got something in exchange. <laughs> Many people were tricked, as you have learned, to sell their destiny for peanuts, for the things that perish it. Which means there are certain profits you get from the devil 
for transacting your soul. And here is where you understand the language among the so-called stars that I have sold my soul to the devil. And in exchange for that soul, Satan gave them something that they wanted. They coveted after. We've learned how Eve traded a destiny for the forbidden fruit. We already studied that and you know that's a metaphoric statement. We saw how Adam traded his destiny by losing his spiritual authority over his wife. Thank you, Jesus. Even the sons of God that left their first estate, as we will study further, if the Holy Ghost give us space to get there, they also traded their destiny for sex with daughters of men and they lost their destiny. They are now bound in Tartarus. In the place of blackness and darkness with chains. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Romans 6 says, Knowing these, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that we henceforth we should not serve sin. So the moment you have your destiny on sale, you become the servant. You remember Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 7, the evil under the sun servant on the oars and princes walking. That's an exchange. This is how Adam brought all his generation to become slaves of sin. To whomsoever your destiny is sold, transferred, your star is transferred, your glory is transferred, you automatically become a servant to that person. Hey. Because every destiny transaction is a covenant. What did I say, somebody? Can somebody else say it louder? Every destiny transaction is a covenant. Can you say it again? Thank you. That is why Satan looks for covenant tools like sex to transact destinies. Like the words of your mouth to transact destinies. Like visit to shrines, voodoo, consulting demons, partaking tables of the devil. Every destiny transacted was transacted on the platform of covenant by deception. They are never straightforward. An enticement is involved. They, you were marketed and they got your destiny because you knew not until the glory departed. So every soul that is sold are covenanted to serve the devil. This became obvious in the life of every human being until you come to Jesus. John chapter 8, 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. Are you understanding wisdom, child of God? Paul said, We all have choices to make afterwards. According to Romans 6, 16 again. Know ye not that to whom ye yield your destiny... <laughs> Your soul, servants to obey, is servant ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Verse 17, and God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Verse 20, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. And in John 8, 44, Jesus Christ says, Ye are of your father the devil and his lost of you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Now we are servants of righteousness. Verse 22 says, But now be made free from sin. That day you break covenant with sin is that day you begin to journey back to destiny. And the very first thing that will happen to you in Zion is deliverance. You became servants of God. And when you are a servant of God, you are servicing your destiny. Everyone that is called a servant of God is pursuing the purpose of God for his life per time. Not talking about apostle, prophet, and teacher. We are all servants of God. Because each of us have destinies in God to fulfill. And when we talk about obey and serve him, we are also referring to you identifying your purpose and fulfilling it. And he said, when you begin to do that, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So don't forget every soul, every destiny, every 
star, every glory are sold deliberately by the enemy on a deceitful ground. And they all come with fleshly benefit with eating sorrow. There are things you will benefit, so to say, listen carefully, deceptively. When your destiny is being traded, there are benefits that the devil will present to you. You will be enticed, but know that it is for your soul. Know that it is for your soul. And your soul becomes of a necessity because once your soul is possessed, you are disconnected from your star. And once you are disconnected from your star, as you have learned, you will never be able to connect the real reason why God sent you here. The moment your soul is under the control of your new master, forget about your star. Forget about your glory. They will give you a new life to live. <laughs> Pray in the Holy Ghost. It's only the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and added no sorrow to heat. Proverbs 10, 22. So again, Mark 8, verse 27. What shall a man give? There is nothing more expensive, more precious, more valuable than your star, your glory, and your destiny. And the soul is the weapon, is the tool, the conduit that God is going to use in this realm to help fulfill his mandate for your life. And that's why Satan is ever after your soul. We give you praise, Lord. We learned so much about Adam the other day, how Adam transferred his destiny, his glory, his power, his kingdom to the devil. And everything Adam was supposed to be controlling, the devil was now the one controlling them. And now that Jesus has reversed. And that's one of the things we are also learning today. How did Jesus reverse the destiny of Adam? And how are you going to reverse your destiny? When Jesus recovered the destiny of Adam, Adam regained dominion. And Jesus ensured that the constitution was changed immediately. So that no man in Christ will again be an eternal victim of the deception of the devil. Follow me step by step tonight, sons of God. Let's learn wisdom and let's live a life of splendor and fulfillment. What shall a man give in exchange for the reason for which God sent him here? There is no value costly enough to exchange your destiny for. In about day three, we understood the value, how to place value on your destiny. They are the teaching. So there's an exchange of destiny, brother. There are destinies already sold, sisters. And once they are sold, they are sold. It is transferred. And once it is transferred and you are still here, you are no longer living for God. You are living for the devil. You are living another life, not the life God sent you here to do. To live. Kura and Demba Sobredia. What shall a man give in exchange for his destiny. Is your destiny important to you? Many of you have lived 45 years, 30 years. You don't even know what your destiny is all about. So the question is, that, what kind of life have you been living? And then this goes again to parents. How can you be so callous that you don't even know the purpose of existence of your children? And if you are a child under a parent, nothing should be more important to you than knowing the reason why God created you. Forget about those physics, chemistry, biology, English, mathematics. Those things will only become relevant when you know the primary reason God sent you here. Let us stop joking with life. You don't have a life without destiny, discovery, star recognition, glory identification. Nobody have a life without destiny, discovery, star recognition, glory identification. So if you are going to fulfill the purpose of your existence, you need to discover your star. You need to discover your destiny. You need to know the glory of God upon your life. Thank you, Jesus. The reason why this is important inclusively is that many people are living a different kind of life. Born to be a teacher, I ended up an accountant. Once you miss your destiny, you miss everything. You will miss your wife. You will miss your children. You will miss your location. You will miss your glory in life. So if you are still here, you are not living. You are just existing. Living a different kind of life for that devil. Anyone on earth 
not running and pursuing the purpose of God for his life in alliance with his or her star. I've taught you how your star will connect with you throughout your lifetime. Anyone not doing that, you are not living for God. You are living for the devil. You are living the life of the devil. If you ever marry, you are not marrying for God. You are not marrying for destiny. Forget it. Once you understand purpose, you understand destiny, you understand star, you understand glory, every other thing will fall in place for you. And every exchange of souls, there is no eternal value there. The moment your destiny is exchanged, the moment your soul is bought, the moment your star is blocked, the moment your glory is transferred, you have no more eternal value. Thank you, Jesus. And you remember how cheap many people have sold their soul for five minutes sexual intercourse, for $500 of bribery, <laughs> for fighting with your husband, for lying to your children. Very cheap. Many of you, your destiny are so cheap because you don't know the value of destiny. <laughs> Zachary Akasikte. Thank you, Jesus. To sell your soul means you have traded your destiny that God gave you to be made manifest to his glory on earth through the partnership with your star, which is your spirit, to exclusively achieve the purpose of God on earth. All right, let's do a little more study. I want you to realize the whole essence of salvation yesterday. I mean, today, as we discovered yesterday. I want to try as much as possible by the Holy Ghost to bring you into a revelation knowledge of the weapons of recovery of your destiny and for you to realize how Jesus already paid the price for your destiny recovery and sustainable fulfillment of every destiny of every man. So from here, please pay attention. Jesus already traded his soul, his destiny, his glory, his star for, for you and I. I'm going to say that again. I want to begin to show you and make sure you realize and never forget that Jesus Christ already paid the price. He already traded his glory, his star, his destiny for our destiny. Jesus exchanged his life, his glory, his majesty for us. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 53 verse 12. When you read the entire Isaiah chapter 53, you will see the transaction that Jesus Christ brought to bear. How Jesus exchanged his destiny for our destiny. And I want to bring it into limelight like never before by the Holy Ghost to you. But let's check verse, 5, verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he had poured out his soul. He sold his soul unto death. Psalm 16 verse 10 and Act of Apostles chapter 2 verse 27. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. What is it about the soul of Jesus Christ? The Bible says he gave up the soul. He yielded up the ghost. That's the soul of Jesus. As what? As the ultimate price. So that your own soul can be recovered from death. So that every star from Adam will come back to life and fulfill the purpose of God for their lives. I'm telling you, sons and daughters, there's a big question in the body of Christ that this series is also, is also going to help us to understand. For as many that are patient to learn, I will just cause trouble for the devil. Is there a reincarnation? We will answer it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus became the ransom. Hey! That's a powerful word. What is a ransom, somebody? You know, you sing, you read, but we never pay attention. The soul of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the glory of Jesus, the power of Jesus became the ransom for our souls. And when we talk about the soul of Jesus, you already, we've already learned it means his life on earth, his blood. When I talk to you about the power of the blood of Jesus, and what, the, what the blood of Jesus really is. You remember that? So the soul of Jesus became the full payment for destiny recovery for everyone who has ever traded their destiny before he came, when he came, and after he came. Please hear me loud and clear. And this should begin to give you hope. The soul of Jesus became the full payment for destiny recovery of every soul from Adam and the whole world at large. So that each one that comes to Christ shall then begin to be able to fulfill the purpose 
of their existence. That is why he is called the quickening spirit. Meaning, he has fused with your star and by that technology, be led by the spirit, you definitely will fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Taking it slowly tonight. Isaiah 35 verse 10, and the ransomed of the Lord, the ransomed of the Lord, that's you and I, the ecclesia, shall return and come to Zion. I want to be translated to Zion. Fine. With songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. And they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The ransomed of the Lord. Jeremiah 31 verse 11. For the Lord had redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. And they sang and you have redeemed us unto our God. You have brought us back unto our God. John chapter 10 verse 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life, my soul, my power, my dominion, my authority, all that I am. I gave up as a price to recover the destinies of every soul that has ever been, that will ever be. Look at Mark 10 verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. What does it mean to serve? To give his life as a ransom. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. John 10, 17. Follow me in the name of the Lord. Let's take it step by step. Therefore, doth my father love me because I became a ransom. Do you don't understand this, do you? Jesus is telling you the reason why he became the king is because he paid the ultimate price. He helped all of them. To recover their destiny. He paid the price no man could pay. So that God will not lose his image and likeness. And the eternal purpose of God shall be fulfilled. Thank you Jesus. Because I laid down my life. That I might take it again. So what's a ransom? A ransom, listen carefully. These are legal terms. A ransom is the total demanded price. Carefully listen to my definition. The ransom is the total demanded price that is paid to free a hostage or someone in captivity. Have you listened to that definition now? So Jesus Christ became the full penalty, the full price for your freedom. To buy a slave back or for freedom to set free from a particular liability or from charges. So to ransom means to deliver. To reclaim, to redeem, to rescue, to buy back, to save, to repossess at a given non-negotiable agreed price. And this price was determined in Genesis chapter 3 at the court of heaven. The seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And the devil from that moment began to fight the possible ransom. And he decided to corrupt the entire human race. So that the ransom will never come. Because he was enjoying the dominion of Adam. So you think the one who has taken over your destiny will give it back to you easily? You must be joking. The devil fought for 4,000 years. The ransom will never come. That's why he brought the Nephilim. That's why he sent the sons of God. That's why he does all the evil he did. That's why he corrupted the human race. All the evil you have ever seen is to make sure the ransom never came. He doesn't want to let go of the dominion of Adam, the glory and the star of Adam. It's so pathetic, as I showed you yesterday, how much power God gave man and he lost everything to the devil. Everything he lost. Satan began to live the life of Adam. Satan began to live the life of Adam. To the point that when Jesus came, he called him the prince of this world. <laughs> Some people still say in so many quarters that the devil is the god of this world. Not anymore. Jesus won. The kingdoms of this world now begun, belong to Jesus. Jesus reversed the error of Adam. Jesus got back the glory and the dominion and the power of Adam. Get the teaching of yesterday. Get lost, Satan. My destiny is not for sale. Once you are ransomed, you are free. You are guiltless. You are discharged and acquitted. But it's the fiso. What does it mean to be ransomed? Thank you, Jesus. So is it that you go to prison or you pay the fine? Once you pay the fine, you are ransomed from prison. 
you can go and live your life and nobody will charge you again for, for any offense. So ransom is equivalent to your offense. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Once the ransom is paid, justice is saved. According to Eastern's Bible Dictionary, this is how they define ransom. The price of payment made for our redemption. As when it is said that the Son of Man gave his life as a ransom for many. I've already shown you that. Thank you, Jesus. So what is ransom? The debt is represented not as cancelled, but as fully paid. I want to explain that to you. And this is the core of what the Holy Ghost sent me to tell you tonight. We are, in, we are going to differentiate between forgiveness and ransom. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Please let me say it before we continue. To be ransomed is not to be forgiven. Who understood what I just said? But it's like, do you, I'm sure you know this from your, from your law school, right? Ransom is the price for the offense. Ransom is justice paid. To be ransomed is not to be forgiven. Oh, you didn't get it. Who got this? If you what do you understand? Who has understood? Because some of you are celebrating forgiveness. <laughs> If I say what I want to say, some of you will be confused. Were you actually forgiven? No. When somebody is ransomed in the court, nobody can take the charge against him anymore. It's as, it's as if he never committed that offense. Am I talking to you? You cannot charge him for the offense again because the justice was served. He was never forgiven. He paid for the offense. I told you the other day that spirits don't forgive. I'm telling you, sons of God, these are deep stuff, right? When you sin, what the spirit understands is that you must die. That is, go to prison. But man was so loved by God, and God cannot break that law. So for man to be rescued, man has to recover his destiny. It's unfortunate that the devil and his cohorts don't have such advantage. Carry a suffering and a sickness. <laughs> You know, let me put the equation this way. For Satan, the devil, Lucifer, and all his angels to be redeemed, <laughs> they will need a clean spirit to replace them. And I don't know which one wants to risk his destiny for them. <laughs> By spiritual law, somebody has to take the place of the devil in the lake of fire and pay the price. For the devil to be redeemed. Spirit don't understand forgiveness. Spirit understand death. And for you not to die, somebody must die in your place. Oh, come on. Did you get it? Make sure you understand. It's very important. So, when Jesus became our ransom, we were not forgiven. We were made righteous. <laughs> Holy Spirit, have mercy tonight. So, the death was not cancelled. The debt was paid. Adam must die. For Adam not to die, somebody has to replace Adam. And whoever will replace Adam must be Adam himself. And for Adam to replace Adam, Adam must be sinless. But Adam is already sinful. So no other Adam can save Adam. So what did God do? He made himself Adam. Oh my, Maria could Adam. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. I'm going to say it again. For Adam to be saved from eternal death. Eternal separation from God, that's death. Temporary te separation from God is the first death. Eternal separation from God is the second death. And the first death is when your body dies and your soul leaves your body and the soul is in prison in Hades or Sheol. If you are a sinner after the resurrection. Before the resurrection, every soul is kept in hell. But there are two compartments. Abraham's bosom and where the rich man was with, with, with fire. And, uh, when we are studying spiritual realms, so you understand all these things. Let, let me not go deeper into that. So when God said the seed of the, of the woman is referring to an image of Adam that will, re, that will be pure. And he's the only one qualified to recover the destiny of Adam. To gain back the star of Adam. The glory of Adam. And no man was found in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. Except the lion of the tribe of Judah who prevailed. And what did God do? 
he made himself Adam. And that's why Jesus was called the last Adam. And the job of the last Adam is that he was made a quickening spirit. <laughs> and when he won the war, as I've taught you and will teach you, he began to quicken us. We, we died with him. A, a spiritual equation was performed and will be performed for everyone that believes. And it translated us immediately. The moment you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it translates you because you don't exist anymore. What happened was that that life never existed. That life of sin never existed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Jesus terminated that evil life. And what did he do? He poured your soul from dead works. Your soul becomes purified. Your body still seems intact. But your spirit now becomes quickened. What did Jesus do? He fuses his spirit into your spirit and sent his spirit instantly into your heart. So the life you are now living is no longer your life. You are now living his life. It's a technology of God. Don't be too surprised. How do you think the Nephilim multiply demons? Don't be too surprised. We are studying these things. Get the teaching. Get the teaching. Repeat this place over and over again. Then you will understand what he said. Thank you, Jesus. Every slave or every captive, every adopted or kidnapped person, they are never released or liberated with tears. <laughs> it's either a ransom is paid or a warfare is put in place by police and military. Thank you, Jesus. The price must be fully paid as demanded. So what does it mean to be ransomed? The original owner now receives back what has been alienated or what has been lost in possession because he has paid the full price to have it back. Some of you have heard or maybe some of you have been part of kidnappers. They demand ransom. That ransom is the full determined price that we give you back your son, your daughter, your wife. Thank you, Jesus. So the life of Jesus, don't forget this statement. The soul of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the destiny of Jesus became our ransom. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 to 22. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, you already know what the blood of Jesus is. He's talking about the soul of Jesus. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes under the arrest and your destiny has been captured. Your star has been transferred. Your glory has been transferred. And enemies in your mind. Notice where your enmity is God with carnal mindedness. By wicked works, because there are demons that are now living in you that makes you to live a different kind of life. They exchange your destiny for this evil destiny. The same way demons control your mind is the same way the Holy Ghost now wants to control your life to live the destiny God ordained for you in Christ. Yet now at irreconcile in the body of his flesh through death. To present you only and unblameable on the path of destiny and unreprovable in the sight of God. To present you that when God looks at you, you are perfect. You are on course of destiny. Jesus paid this price to God. He was the only atoning sacrifice. The only acceptable price for the redemption of Adam. I know I'm saying some deep stuff tonight, but you are understanding, right? It became the only propitiation for our sins. I like to read that in Amplified Version, verse 21. And through the intervention of the Son to reconcile all things to himself, making peace with believers through the blood of his cross, through him I say, whether things on earth or in heaven. You didn't hear what I said. Whether things on earth or in heaven. You didn't hear what I said. The price of redemption of Jesus Christ did not just cover the re reconciliation of mankind to God. Hey, I want to say something that will blow you away. But I laid, it, I laid the foundation for this yesterday. Jesus reconciled things in heaven also. What are those things in heaven that Jesus reconciled? The blood of Jesus Christ did not just save man, 
did not just make the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of our God, the blood of Jesus Christ also redeemed, bought back, ransomed things in heaven. Oh, you didn't get that. I know it's new to you, but do you understand what I'm trying to say? What are those things? What are those things that Jesus bought back for man? <laughs> for the accusers of the brethren is cast down, who accuses them before our God day and night. Likabashanda barukataka. This guy took the throne of Adam in the presence of God. And there was set up in heaven a throne of accusation. When Jesus resurrected, having paid the full price, the devil was cast down and there was joy in heaven. And woe was declared on earth. But before that time, the Bible says there was war in heaven. So when the devil saw that Jesus won on earth, he won in hell and he ascended, whoo, war was declared. He was not going to let go of the throne of Adam. <laughs> you don't get it. Your destiny recovery require intelligent warfare. So what are the things in heaven? <laughs> The Bible says rejoice, O ye heaven. Why should heaven begin to rejoice? We will stop seeing this idiot. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. It's important we read this. Verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and the, by the word of their testimony. Notice what the blood of the Lamb is, the ransom. Listen carefully. Every time you present the evidence of the blood, the devil can't stand it. That's the ransom. I've, I've, I've finished preaching the message by the statement I just made. But you need to understand the details now. But I've finished preaching the message. If you understood that, that's the message. If you are able to present the evidence of the ransom, that's why in court today, when the judgment is passed and you have been discharged and acquitted, they publish the judgment for everybody to see. Am I correct, somebody? So if anybody calls you a thief, after the ransom has been paid, it is illegal because you are not a thief anymore. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. There are three that bearded witness in heaven, record in heaven, and witnesses on earth. The blood, the water, and the spirit. And they love not their lives unto death. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens. Rejoice ye heavens. That's a plural. I've taught you the different heavens. We have at least three heavens. But in each of the heavens, there are dimensions. And the Bible is declaring, ye heavens, not specifically specifying one. But I've showed you as far as the devil was operating. Because he took the glory, the honor, the dignity, the paraphernalia, the command, the office of Adam. That's what the devil does to you when you transact your destiny. He takes everything and give it to whomsoever he wills. He takes everything. I showed you how he wanted to trade the destiny of Jesus and said, I give it to whomsoever I will. He takes everything. You will be left with nothing when you trade your destiny. Adam was left with nothing. He was actually even chased out of the garden. What? Many of you have been chased out of your garden because you traded your destiny. It's evident in your life. It doesn't matter how glorious you think your life is. You know, deep inside you, you are not where you are supposed to be. Rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Why? Because there is a guy that has been given eviction from the throne of Adam because the second man has arrived. And the Bible says God has set up a new throne for the new Adam transformed to the new man, the second man. Oh! Oh, shall we go home? Because if I was preaching in America now, everybody would be clapping. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are just quiet. As <laughs> Do you understand what I'm showing you, child of God? Hmm. When the Bible said, now let us come boldly to the throne of grace. The throne of grace was only set up after the resurrection of Jesus. The throne that was there before was the throne of judgment. And the constitution that death was using was the law. And when a new government took over, because Colossians told you, it spoiled principalities and powers and blot out 
the handwriting of ordinances that was written against them. Jesus paid the price to God and paid the price to the devil. God said, nobody can please me. He said, I will please you. And now if I please you, let's have, an, let's have, a, let's have an agreement. The moment I please you, anybody who believes in me pleases you. It shouldn't be too far for you. Because the, you are not a sinner because you are sinning. You are originally a sinner because you are a child, you are a child and offspring of Adam. That's why by one price, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. And he now said, from now on, come boldly. Don't come with fear anymore to the throne of grace because there is a new government. Jesus set up a new government on earth from heaven. And he sat down at the right hand of God to defend you to the latter. You are no longer being prosecuted. You are no longer being accused in the presence of God. You are now being defended by the chief advocate. If any man sin it, ye have what? An advocate. <laughs> I think let's go home. I'm showing you, you can't lose your destiny forever. It is recoverable because you're now under a new government. All you need to know is how to play your card with this new government and the prices of your destiny recovery was already fully paid. You just need to know how the constitution, you need to know the judgment statement and you need to know how to maximize it. Zakaru Asefreni Subasa. And do you know the interesting thing? The judgment of the devil and the price and the penalty of the souls of Jesus Christ is made available globally. It's made available throughout the universe. It's made available in all the heavens. It's made available beneath the heavens. It's made available on hell. It's made available in hell. That's why when he came back, he said, Now, all power ha! in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And Philippians chapter 2 says, In the name of Jesus, every kneel in heaven, on earth, beneath the head, we bow. And every tongue, we confess that Jesus is Lord. What does that mean? His word is final. No one is greater than him. If you are speaking on his behalf, every devil in hell will shiver because they know the authority above all authority is speaking. God has made him to sit down at the right hand far above all principalities, all powers. And that's where you are seated. If your life is right, yes, that's where you are seated. So if Jesus is above all devils, so who is above you? Because you don't know your value. That's why you go sell your throne for chicken change. For stupid things. Stupid things like lie, compromise, opening your leg. Stupid things like bribery. Stupid things like envy. You go sell your throne far above principalities and powers for stupid things. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus did not just pay the price of your redemption. He paid the price for the restoration of the sun the moon the stars the cosmos and all the host of heavens that the devil has subject to pain that i told you yesterday so when jesus paid the price the forest began to rejoice the animal kingdom began to rejoice the stars began to rejoice the moon began to rejoice. The sun began to rejoice because they had been subject to pain. The Bible says all creation had been subject to pain until now. Let me talk to those who want to understand. He said whether they are visible on earth or invisible in the spiritual realm, the price he paid covered them. And through his son, complete Jewish Bible, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven. Why do things in heaven need reconciliation? If they, has, they have not been taken away from God. When Adam lost his dominion, he first lost that dominion in the spiritual realm. And when Adam lost the dominion, everything that God has put under the command of Adam, visible and invisible, were lost to the devil. And so when Jesus paid the price, he reconciled not just man back to God, he reconciled all those other things back to God. Come on, child of God. It's not just the kingdoms of this world that was reconciled back to God. It's not just the souls of men that was reconciled back to God. There are heavenly creatures also that were under the command of Adam that were reconciled back to God. Making peace through him, through having his son shed his blood, 
by being executed on the tree. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. I know you've never heard that before, but hear it today and save it. You will need it. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21. Glory to God. We give you praise. Let me do Ephesians 2, verse 16. Glory to God. We give you praise. And he designed, I'm reading from Amplified Version. He designed to reconcile to God both Jew and Gentiles united in a single body by means of his cross, thereby killing the mutual enmity and bringing the few to an end. Jesus did not just reconcile things in heaven and on earth. He also made sure by his blood, he paid the price that the whole world will be united to the Jews. Do you understand that, my child of God? So any soul you traded, they will go to hell. With your body in hell, according to Matthew 10, 28, that God is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Notice that it's not the spirit. Your star cannot go to hell. Star will easily go to someone else. Your glory can't go to hell. It will go to someone else. But your soul will go to hell because you sold it for chicken change. <laughs> and why will anybody go to hell? You rejected the ransom of the Lord. So you chose lake of fire for rejecting the full penalty. And what does it cost you to, to be redeemed? Just to say, I'm sorry, Lord. That's all. Just to say, I'm sorry. Chicken. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. That's all. And follow through with the process of restoration. That's why you are going to hell. Because you cannot say you are sorry to the Lord. Because you cannot repent with godly sorrow. Because you cannot forsake and be converted. That's why you are going to hell. The price was fully paid for you not to follow the devil to the lake of fire. You foolishly decided to follow him. For what? For material things. This is a married man. And you say, Lord, you know, I don't want to do it. Too, but you will just forgive me. Lake of fire. First class. Yes, <laughs> Kataria. John 3, 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Already condemned. Don't believe me to accept he has paid the price and see it clearly so. So, brothers and sisters, sins are never forgiven outside Christ. What happened to sin before you gave your life to Jesus Christ? They are never forgiven. They were paid for. And once they are paid for, what the Bible says is that they are blotted out. For your sin to be blotted out is not the same as your sin forgiven. When a case is taken out of court, is ruled out of court. It's no longer a case. So that day you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your case was ruled out of court. There is no case anymore because the penalty was paid. The ransom was paid. Someone else has taken your place in destiny. So anyone whose destiny is already sold, I have good news for you. Jesus already took your place in soul destiny only if you can believe and take his own place by faith, your destiny will be recovered. You put Jesus in place of that destiny that is sold and present the evidences to that devil. That moment, all the devil in hell will restore your destiny back to you. I'll show you how to do it. Jeremiah 31 verse 34. And they shall not at all teach everyone his fellow citizen. I'm reading from the Septuagint. And everyone is brother, say, Know the law, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Why? For I will be merciful to their iniquities and their sins I will remember no more. In some places where this scripture is interpreted, I will be merciful. When you read in King James Version or some other versions, they will use the word, I will forgive. They are iniquities, but it's not forgiveness. It is mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. And once you are sentenced to whatever, and there is a provision for fine, it is at the discretion of the judge to make that provision. And when you are able to fulfill that provision, mercy is granted you. And you will no longer be charged. You will be discharged and acquitted. The fine paid is equal to the prison. So when you know the fine Jesus has paid, it's also equal to the destiny imprisonment. And so you cannot pay the fine and go to prison. So Jesus could not have paid 
The price for your destiny recovery and your destiny is still locked up. It's illegal. Very illegal. And the devil knows. But it will plague you on ignorance. Who heard what I said? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Some of you need to get angry today. And say, what? Your destiny, your glory, your stars should no longer be locked up a second after now. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12. I will be merciful on their unrighteousness. The same scripture that in King James Version was used the word forgiveness for when it was quoted by Apostle Paul in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, he used the right word. I will be merciful on their unrighteousness, which is the same as iniquities. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Do you know the meaning of that? They were not forgiven. They were blotted out of the memory of God. When you became born again, your sins were not forgiven. They were blotted out. I want to sound it to your spirit. You say, man, what about this forgiveness? Forgiveness only happens after you have given your life to Jesus. What happened at the moment of salvation is never forgiveness. It was blotting out. To blot out means to what? To blot out. Oh, you don't get it. Who understood? <laughs> I know. I'm destroying a lot of theology. Who understood? Let's analyze ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 16. This is the covenant. Did you see that it's a covenant? Please notice it is a covenant. That I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. I will hold verse 18. I will come back to verse 18. Isaiah 53. He was wounded for what? Talk to me. What was he wounded for? Transgression. What was he bruised for? Iniquities. Now, God is saying to you, you know the scripture I've given to you, that the sins, transgression, iniquities, he will remember no more. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. You were not forgiven. Somebody took your place. Oh, you don't get it. He that knew no sin became sin. He became you. Oh my goodness. Nobody's catching this, right? So the miserable life you are living now, reverse it. That life was lived by Jesus. Jesus has paid the price. I can't be miserable again. He was sick. I can't remain sick. Do you know he became poor for you to become rich? He didn't marry so that you can marry. <laughs> he was homeless so that you can have homes. He exchanged your destiny for his home. The life Jesus lived for God was a life of mega fulfillment of all the promises that became yea and amen in Christ. But he never enjoyed those ones. Forces have all, oh, beds have nests. The son of man, man has nowhere to lay his head. He did all for you to enjoy. Listen, Isaiah 53, Who shall believe our report and to whom is the harm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. In case you look at yourself in the mirror and you look ugly, tell that ugliness to disappear because Jesus already became ugly. And when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. If nobody is desiring you, reverse it. Jesus was not desired, so I will be desired. He is despised and rejected. If you have been despised and rejected, you don't know your birthright. A man of sorrow, if you have sorrow, where did you get it from? Where did you get it from? And acquainted with grief, are you grieving? You don't know the price that was paid. I'm reading the judgment to you now. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteem him not. Surely he had borne our griefs. In case you doubt. He has borne all the grief. Why are you grieving? And carry our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. So the price of your sin was paid. You were not forgiven. Somebody paid for it. <laughs> I was in a shopping I was in a shop early one day and I was buying some drinks for the family and I saw this woman came into the shop a day before I saw her with this little boy I think she came to buy pencil or ruler or something and I was in the shop again the following morning I saw her again and when I was paying my bill 
I asked the lady at the counter, how much is that woman's bill? So, so, so amount. I said, put it on my bill. And I paid. And I didn't tell her. And so when she was done, she wanted to pay. They told her that I have already paid. She, she was so happy and she said, thank you. And went with the boy going to school. What has just happened to that woman? I paid a bill. I took away her stress. I took away her pain. I took away her worries. It cost her nothing other than thank you. Nothing. Hey, it was bruised for our iniquity. That's why God says, their sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. Why? Somebody paid. You still don't get it. It was fully paid for. You can't be charged. It was paid for in your name. Nobody will come back tomorrow and say, give it to me. Jesus did not pay for it in his name. He paid it in your name. He exchanged his destiny for you. He was not a sinner. You are the sinner. He became the sinner so that you can become righteous. He became poor so that you can be rich. He was sick so you can be healed. You don't get it. Who got this? The chastisement of our peace. When you understand this judgment today and you read it to yourself every day until it sat in your spirit, you will never have a troubled life anymore because the price was fully paid. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, you were already healed. So they are really waiting for any kind of sickness. So much more, you will never even be sick again. So now let's go to verse 18 of Hebrews chapter 10 that we are reading. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we are remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. Do you pay for a good twice in the shop? Hello, somebody. I bought flour for my wife and I sent it home. When at the same time, I just went out and she, a flower was sent. When she collected the flower, they show her that it was fully paid for, right? Mommy, did you pay for that flower? It's a pay forward. You just receive it as a gift. Is that correct? Praise God forever. Mommy, tell them so that they know you receive flower. Is that correct? <laughs> Did you pay for it? With, with some beautiful notes, right? I don't know why you want to pay for what Jesus already paid for. I don't know why you are suffering for what is already fully paid for. You need to go get your destiny back and show that devil the proof of payment. I am like that flower delivery fellow. I have come to present Jesus' roses to you with your name written on it. For you to enjoy. You don't need to pay for it. You don't need to pay for healing. You don't need to pay for glory. You don't need to pay for the recovery of your star. You don't need to pay for the fulfillment of your destiny. Jesus already exchanged everything. He paid everything. We still have a lot to, a lot to learn in how to download and implement this technology. But I'm just setting you up. It will take your crazy understanding and dedicated dogged revelation an application for you to walk in this. Now, let's look at this verse 18 as we begin to try to close tonight. Now, we are remission of this is. What is remission? There is no more offering for sin. We are remission of this is. There is no more offering for sin. Do you know the meaning of that? It was already fully paid for. There is no need to pay again. The word remission in Greek is apesis or apesis. It is transmitted, it is translated wrongly to mean forgiveness. And it's not a perfect translation. The word remission according to biblical context is to be set free from justice, obligations, at the expense of another. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm talking about. Is to be set free, to be relieved of burden at the expense of of another like i did for that woman in the show i relieved her of burden at the at my expense that's the meaning of remission you are you you got the benefit but you it cost you nothing salvation is not free who paid god oh you don't understand is that forgiveness no that's a cost the price was fully paid that's what i'm trying to say to you you need to get home tonight and call the devil to stand up, put his hand on, your, on his back and begin to lecture him. And say, you took my destiny. Ah! I know the truth now. Before I close my eyes and open it again, 
bring that destiny back in sevenfold. We should be dealing with this matter tomorrow or Sunday as God will help us. So a typical example of remission is what happened in the year of Jubilee where you relieve the, the servants at your own expense. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Are you still here, child of God? Glory to Jesus forever. Father, we give you praise. Holy Ghost, we thank you. Let me give you a little more and then we, we close at a good point tonight. So God remitted our sins at the expense of the price of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to say something repeatedly. Your prosperity is already fully paid for. If you are poor, you don't know your birthright. Your health is fully paid for. Fully paid for. Tell that devil you know the truth. The fulfillment of your destiny was fully paid for by the life of Jesus being cut short. Matthew 26 verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Payment for sin. You see, imagine your son. Okay, let me not use you now. Somebody's son was found in a crime. And the father was called. He was at court. And the fine was given. Are you with me, somebody? Before that child will be asking for forgiveness, the father has to pay the fine first. It is only after they have left the, us, the, the, the court that the son will now begin to cry for forgiveness. Is that correct? So you see, remission precedes forgiveness. Forgiveness is a relationship weapon. Remission is a salvation weapon. You have to save someone first of all. <laughs> before forgiveness we follow. We were first remitted to be brought into the family of God. It is not by the works we did. It was a gift of God. So remission is a gift. He gave his only begotten son for our remission. Right? And I'd like to show you one powerful scripture in Acts of Apostles chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you. I think you'll be able to understand from Apostle Peter because he just got trained by Jesus Christ and he never used the word forgiveness. Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. If you read Mark 1 for Luke 24, 47, John the Baptist was baptizing for remission of sin. Water baptism is a cleansing kind of ritual. Acts of Apostles chapter 10 verse 43. Here again, Apostle Peter. To him give all the prophet witness that through his name, whosoever believe in him shall receive remission of sins. Repent every one of you and be converted that your sins may be blotted out and the time of refreshing shall proceed from the presence of the Lord. So it is blotting out of your sin because the price was fully paid. I'm re-emphasizing this so that you can understand how to recover your destiny. The price for the recovery of your destiny was fully paid. Romans 8.32 For he that spear not his own son, but what? Gave him as a price for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Hebrews 9.22 Without shedding of blood, there is no remission. While we are without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5 verse 6 God commended his love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. There was a price. Every salvation is costly. It's never free. Price must be paid to rescue, to deliver, to save. Forgiveness will follow afterwards. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made justified, pure, the righteousness of God. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 3, 19. Our sins were blotted out. So again and again, in the realm of the Spirit, for salvation to take place, there is a transaction. So you saw that there, Jesus has transacted his life, his destiny for ours. So no one in Christ should have a short-circuited destiny, a blocked star, or a transfer glory. Each and every one of us are bound to fulfill the purposes of our existence. But some of us still take ourselves back to the yoke of bondage through 
ignorance. But nevertheless, there is still provision. If any man sin, ye have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. What is he doing there? He's saying, Father, I already paid the price for this kind of stupidity. And while he's advocating for you, you are being pushed here. In this, you are having that conviction in your heart. As you're having that conviction, just remember Jesus is the one advocating for you. If you refuse that conviction, you are preparing yourself for the lake of fire. And that's why when you open your phone, when you open your TV, when you receive a call, they are all pointing you back to restoration. Repent. Repent. Because that's the platform to going back to recover. Because if you delay, you are opening up yourself for destruction. Father, we give you praise. You know, even the Levitical priest, every year has to sacrifice for the remission of the sins of Israel. They, they are blotted out. The Bible said the blood of animals could not make anybody perfect. So it, it took the blood of Jesus to do it. It's a justice payment, brother. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In closing, now that our sins has been blotted out, now that we know the price was fully paid, it is clear and crystal to us now that then we need to begin to navigate our way back into total recovery of our destinies easily by revelation and technically by warfare in romans chapter 8 verse 2 the bible says for the law of sin of the, for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death i will start from here tomorrow wherein i'll begin to lay it out to you one two three four the steps we are supposed to take now based on this revelation unto total recovery. I believe you have been blessed, but some of you will not be able to wait any further. So I'm going to say just one minute prayer that will cause trouble in the kingdom of darkness. Lord, I thank you for the price of destiny recovery has been fully paid to everyone whose destiny are still in captivity, whose destiny has been exchanged. Lord, I thank you like that woman whose price I paid. It cost her nothing but just thank you, sir. Jesus, I thank you for paying the full price for every destiny to be recovered. And I give you praise for every star to be transferred back and every glory to be recovered. And to everyone that is agreeing tonight that I believe that you pay the price, your word says it is of faith that it might be by grace. We have faith, we believe, you paid it, and we thank you for total recovery of every destiny tonight. And every devil from anywhere that want to retaliate cannot deny the witness of the blood, the witness of the water, and the witness of the Holy Ghost, which we present tonight that you came in the flesh. And by this witness, we overcome every destiny hijacker, every destiny exchanger, every destiny stealers. Oh God, I command every destiny to be recovered right now in the power of seven and with speed by emergency. And Lord, everyone who has taken the lives of everyone under this voice are brought into judgment and affliction. Every devil involved afflict them with the constitutional affliction in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says you have been made a guarantee unto us. I ensure every destiny in faith. No one's destiny shall ever be traded again in the name of Jesus. Let no man trouble you because you be at the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And everyone who is on the wrong platform, grace is released to navigate you to the pathway of destiny. Your destiny is coming forward. It has come forward. Go and fulfill that destiny and release grace unto you. The price was fully paid. You can't pay for it anymore. You can't pay twice. Congratulations. God bless you all.